Hey, welcome back for another cryptocurrency technical analysis. I'm going to go over Bitcoin and uh, why the flash crash happened, why we bounced where we did, and uh, what I'm expecting in the future. Uh, this will be a more in-depth video. Uh, I would suggest watching it through. I've got many points as to why we're coming down uh, and to show you what I'm seeing in the future here. I think it's going to make a lot of sense for you. Okay, uh, so first thing first here. Why did we bounce where we bounced? Okay, so you can see we had previous weekly support here. This is the this is uh, weekly candles. Okay, on our low before was about forty three thousand one fifty. Well, we wicked just below it, so we had a lot of buy orders. People were buying at this price here. Okay, so that was a first tell as to why we bounced where we did because people bought this up. All right, so wick is what this is called. This the skinny line. That means the price got to that point during this candle, but where it's closing, so the actual body of the candle is what truly counts. And right now our price is at 49,250. We got as low as 42,400. Depends on what exchange you're on. This is on Coinbase. Uh, some exchanges were lower or higher than others. Uh, but that gives a little bit of confluence as to why we bounced there, of course. But I've got a few other reasons. Um, we had a couple things called divergence. So divergence happens when price action, so the candles here in the chart, is doing something different than an indicator shows. So these are indicators, okay? So if price action is coming up, so here you can see it's coming up, but the indicator is literally just in a downtrend, what, what this indicator here in particular is called the RSI, it's called the Relative Strength Index. That means the strength of the market. If you're above this gray line, it's typically bullish. If you're below it, it's typically bearish. That's, that's kind of who's winning the tug of war, you can think. So we've actually had declining momentum, you can see. You know, we're bullish over here, we're above the line, but look how much less momentum we had than back here at the all-time high six, you know, six months ago, right? This is a year ago, right? But all we've had here is lower prices. You can actually match this guy where I match this one up. Look at how much higher the price is, but how much lower we are here. Okay, so what that's telling me is buyers are less interested. There's less momentum at this price. Kind of makes sense. Buying at 65000 or buying below you know, at 30000 What's more enticing to you, right? Where would you rather buy? It makes sense that we have declining momentum, right? So we had declining momentum. We had that on just about every single indicator you can, you can look at. Okay, so here's another momentum-based indicator here called the awesome oscillator. I find it pretty useful. Look at the divergence on that. I mean, we have hardly any buying momentum here compared to before. Okay, yet we're higher on price. So there's a couple things telling me that this was going to happen. Um, if you were to look on this side over here, I kind of trade two styles. And over here, you can see that we had confirmed divergence here. We have one confirmed. If you go to the monthly, we have six confirmed divergences uh, outside of these even. So these are all diverging as well. Uh, this is amongst a bunch of other indicators, uh, the flow of money. Uh, there, there's a lot of other indicators that checks for us. We had six plus these three on the monthly it's it's kind of ugly. If you were to look at this on a monthly chart, we've really just kind of gone up. Yeah, we had our hiccup here, but you know we haven't had a red candle on here in a while. Well, based on this uh, system I use in a while, um, you know, and we're coming down here. Our momentum was drastically lower, and yet we were higher on price. There's a lot of lot of things here telling me that you know people just aren't really interested. I don't see a hundred thousand happening any day here, right? And that's another story I'll talk about uh, with Twitter and YouTube and how we're going to 100,000. Buy now or you'll miss out. Why do you think that's being released? Number one, people click it. They're interested because they want it to go to 100. So, of course, people are going to click that, right? They're incentivized to do so. Oh, interesting. I got an alert. Um, also, um, you know, a lot of them probably had sell orders up higher. You can only sell if someone wants to buy it. Right, that's trading. People want to buy what you're selling. So if you want to sell at sixty-six thousand, someone needs to buy what you're selling at sixty-six thousand. So naturally, they want to pump it up too, right? 
is another reason. So I'm always skeptical of, you know, YouTube uh, thumbnails and all that saying, oh my God, we're going to a million by now. I'm going to do my analysis first on that. But unfortunately, a lot of, uh, lot of retail traders and people that they don't really know how to read a chart, you know, they're buying into that and then they get dumped on. It's, an, it's the unfortunate game. It's how it works. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully I can arm you and give you, you know, some guidance as to what to look for and how to not be that person, right? If you were to look at this, I consider this kind of like a mountain, okay? So here's our mountain and we're in the snow on the mountain, right? You don't want to buy in the snow. You don't want to buy up here. You want to buy down here where there's trees and there's animals. I'll draw a terrible fish. Here we go, right? That's the, that, that's the worst fish I've ever drawn. It's probably more like a whale. So you want to buy down here when it's boring, right? When people aren't looking at it. That's where you want to buy, right? But it's really, of course you want to buy up here because that's when it's exciting and things are pumping and oh my God, we're going to the moon. You want to be a part of it, right? It's called FOMO, fear of missing out. You don't want to miss out on the moon, right? When reality, FOMO is what gets people caught up and FOMO is what makes people lose money more than anything. That's why over 90% of people will lose money in this market because of FOMO. You're, you fear you're going to miss out on something, so you better get in. And then you get emotional when it comes down. So you sell at a loss, right? It's the unfortunate truth that happens to so many people. Uh, it's happened to me many times when I was learning, you know, and eventually I learned like, hey, I need to stop doing this. You know, let's let's figure this market out rather than just buying when it's green. When you buy when it's red, you're buying on a discount. When you buy when it's green, you're buying when it's more expensive. How does that make sense, right? So anyway, uh, I... Uh, We'll get off that tan uh, tantrum there. So if we were to go come down on the daily chart here, okay? So here's our daily chart. The BBWP that I've talked about uh, last couple of videos here, right? When it's in the blue, we're looking for a move. This means volatility is very low. We're just kind of doing this on the chart, right? Volatility expands, right? When volatility is expanding... This guy is coming upwards. This does not mean price is increasing because it's going up. That means volatility is increasing, right? Price is moving more. Now, keep in mind, you see I'm doing this? It can go up. It can go down when it's doing this. It doesn't mean it's just going to go up. It could go down too, right? There can even be a little fake out where it goes up and then down. That's just volatility. That's all this is telling me. So because we've been in the blue for several days here, I was expecting some sort of move. And if you've been following along, you'll notice that the same trend line that has been fighting us for days still kept us down, right? It's just not, we're not breaking it. That's kind of demoralizing, right? I wasn't interested in buying here. We can't break this trend line. You know, it's, it's, it becomes kind of demoralizing. Well, look what happened, right? Eventually it, it, it fought back, right? And it, and it just, it just continued to come down. And this was our increase in volatility. Here's our volatility. Here we go. We got it. And it's still increasing right now. So what does that tell me? We could bounce up, down, up, down. Who knows? In reality, because this wick came all the way down here, oftentimes when we have a large wick, we tend to fill it. Okay, so here's an example right here. When we came down hard here, here's this wick. It got bought up. Well, eventually we came right through where that wick was, didn't we? And we filled it, right? It would not surprise me one bit to fill this wick over time, right? I don't expect us to just go, you know, in one day here. Although, look what just happened. <laughs> in, in, in one day, we went from 53700 to, yeah, it was $11,000 in a day. Isn't Bitcoin just crazy, right? So, um, another thing I have here is the weekly... This is called the EMA, okay? So there's exponential moving averages. What this does is these lines are indicative of how many candles, uh, the average between them, okay? So I have the light blue one is nine candles, and because this is weekly, nine weeks worth of price. So this takes, let's say you're right here. It takes nine candles back, and it averages the price, and it makes a line where the average was. Okay, so I have the 9, the 21, the 55, 100, and 200 right here. Okay, 
you'll notice on the pump up here, when we came up here in January, all throughout 2021, right? We were holding this nine. You notice we held it the whole way and then we broke down through it. The 55 caught us. 55, 55, all throughout the summer there. When we thought we were going to zero, fear was everywhere. Oh my gosh, the market's over. The 55 held us this whole time. Yeah, we closed below it here, but we immediately bought it up. That was that was a good save. And then the market continued. And then we got back above the 21 and the 9 from there. Okay, well, look where we wick to. Voila, the 55. Okay, so we have the 55. We have the previous low here on the weekly candle close. This is where people are buying. There's support here naturally. Okay, so people bought because of this support. They bought because we're at the EM, the 55 EMA. Um, also, the fact that, I mean, we came down to 42 and we were just at 66. People are thinking, hmm, this is a good buying opportunity. Now, I'm not a fan of catching a falling knife. Like, it's coming down. You don't know how far it's going to go. You know, I'm, I'm not really a fan of that. I personally am more interested when I start seeing some consolidation like this guy here, and then we start to pump up here in reverse trend. That's when I'm more interested personally. Of course, I'm going to use other indicators and other ideas, you know, and maybe I'll, maybe I would have bought a little bit in here, let's say, you know, just judging by other things I'm seeing. But for simplicity's sake, typically, no, I'm not really interested in just buying when it's going, uh, going crazy down. Okay. Um, the fact that all of these EMAs, you notice the slope of them, the angle of them was very, very much vertical here and how we kind of slowed down. Okay. Now they're a little bit straighter. Now, you know, they're pointed up here, but not so much. Even the nine and the 21 are actually curving down a little bit here. That's a little bit concerning, um, but still uh, the market shape is okay. What I'm looking for personally after this, if the 55 does not hold, okay? So if this guy breaks through, I'm looking for the 100. If the 100 breaks through, I'm looking for the 200. It takes so much emotion out when you're seeing the market coming down as to, oh my gosh, it's going to go to zero. Number one, no, it's not. Because I'm going to buy it all before that. <laughs> but it gives you easy, easier targets because a lot of traders use this. If a lot of traders use the same target, you're going to have more of a backing behind you to go along with your sentiment. If you're buying, a lot of people are buying, that's a good sign and vice versa. If a lot of people are selling, you probably want to sell with it right at the start. Okay. You'll notice that the 200 actually caught us. The previous bull market in 2017 here. Okay. Look at the 200 catch us. Boom. Literally the exact low. Bounced up here. Then we had the good old flu bug start in March 2020. Yeah, we wicked well below it, but we closed all the way up here on the 200 and it saved us. And then we continued on from there. Okay. So I am expecting so much support at the 200 if we come down that low. I know I'm projecting 20 something thousand when we're up at 49,000. I get it. Um, but it, it, it gives me more peace of mind to have targets and to know, okay, what's happening here? Why did we bounce here? What can I look for? Now at this point, for, we need to get back above this yellow 21 EMA. Once we do that, safe to say we could continue moving up there. There's a chance we do that if we hold that. Okay, so we held it here. We continued up, right? If we do that, it's kind of a bullish sign, but that's also at 52,500. And we have one day left in this weekly candle. So we'd have to do some work here. We need to come up another $3,000 to close above it. That can happen, but you know, until we even get over 50,000, the psychological 50,000 number, we got some work to do here. I would not be surprised for us to come back down here, right in the back of this zone, fill this wick, consolidate here for a bit. Um, we'll see. You know, uh, I, I'm not too worried about the market necessarily ending here, um, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea as to why I've been actually pretty bearish for weeks now. I was expecting downside, maybe not as quickly as it happened, but yet again, stick to ranges. So I've been talking about the last couple of days, stick to ranges, find your price targets. We had this weekly level here at 43,200 and that's where we bounced. Okay. 
We have this monthly level at 47,100. You'll notice we actually consolidated at this monthly for quite a bit once we started bouncing. So this monthly does have relevance. From there, we need to get back above this daily level at 53,800. You'll notice that we held it as support here. This bounce was pretty predictable, actually, if you were just paying attention to the charts. We held the 53,000 as support for days. Here we are. We came down below it. We could not get back over it, right? We wicked. We tried four hours, five hours in a row. Eventually, we couldn't do it. That sent us down to the depths of hell, okay? So just to give you an idea as to why that dump happened, well, this previous support turned into resistance. We need to come back down to the next level, which was at least 47,000. And that's what happened, okay? Hopefully this gave you a little bit of an explanation. Um, I didn't want to make it too confusing here, uh, but just uh, keep your calm. Know that it can be kind of scary when this is happening in the market. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's pretty much all in the charts. And uh, as, as of right now, I, I'm, I, am, I am bearish uh, midterm on the market, meaning for the next you know, few weeks here, I could definitely see more downside continuation. However, I would not be surprised to come back up again and retest this 54,000 range, even up as high as this 56,000. You know, I would not be surprised to retest that again. So hopefully this helped you. If you enjoyed this content, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss the next one. All right. Have a great rest of your night.